Hey guys and welcome back to the harsh and unforgiving world of post Fanem, which of course is not quite as harsh and unforgiving as it used to be. We do of course have all the food on tap that we ever need. We have little caves inside our own base. We have a cutting edge computer technology and of course a nuclear power reactor powering our steam turbine here. So the world is getting a much nicer place to live in. Uh, so much so that I have actually gone... Ooh, look, I'm into the floor. Craziness. Let's teleport up there like that. I've actually gone ahead and made myself an end game wall. I think these are the six ish objectives that I need to do to be able to count this world complete. Maybe put the put a roof on this place might be something as well. But what do I want to do here? Well, obviously, we need to make two more villages. There's uh, another two races of people that I want to bring in back into the world. <coughs> There's also the laser drill to do. You remember last time we were in the quest book here. Clicking, clicking. Uh, the, the advanced tech. We managed to do this laser precharger quest. Which, I'm not sure which one of these we're getting. I know I want maybe the yellow one for the yellow right. And then I want some green for like diamond and uranium. Uh, diamond? What? No, emerald and uranium and stuff like that. But the endless power is the next quest we need to do to push on with that. And look. There is a green focus. Now, I happen to have left myself a nice little hint here from last time about what I'm supposed to be doing, but we'll do that in a second. We have some more exploration to take care of. In the explore quest here, you can see we've got the pure energy for the gas, uh, sorry, the blaze spawners. I was like, don't get it wrong, don't get it wrong, I still said it wrong. And over here, we have the hot air uh, gas spawners. I would also like to get all the farm animals done for the civilization tech. This one here, we can just go through and do a few of these. You can see I've done the sheep and the cows. None else have been done, so I'd like to do that as well. And I'd also like to get a drone out. You remember we built that dirt farm down below? I'd like to put its output chest up on the surface here somewhere and then write a little algorithm for a drone to go around and replace all the obsidian with dirt. The obsidian could then be broken down for silicon dioxide. The uh, cellulose is obviously got from the vines. So that would be a completely self-fulfilling loop there. It could keep re-going forever. So I might make one of those at some point. But of course, first I've put myself an end game uh, crafting bench behind the end game wall. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these items that I had crafted myself here into an appropriate pattern. It's almost as if I didn't want myself to get anything wrong here. And here is the laser drill. When combined with the laser precharger, it gives us infinite stuff. Uh, you need to dig down a shaft to bedrock, which hopefully, if I kind of look over this way, hopefully, it's not as if we don't know what's over there. If we just look beyond, you can see that little bit of wood in the floor right there. That is a shaft that goes nearly all the way down to bedrock, so maybe we could do something with that. And before the sun sets, in fact, let's watch the sunset. About there? No, that's a terrible sunset view. Let's put that there. We can have a look inside our advanced tech and pick out a few of the things here. Now, obviously, here we want to try and grab ourselves maybe the turbine glass because that will allow us to have a little bit of expansion. The lasers to fall. I'm going to go with the yellow, right? The yellow uh, laser. And I'm hopefully going to go in here and grab us the green one. And that should provide us with all sorts of power. So, next build uh, over at the laser shack that we need to build so we are relatively close to home at the shaft that i was talking about i've taken the opportunity to throw up a small platform here as well as some powering conduit because i want to put this laser drill just here you can see at the bottom it goes all the way down to a bit of bedrock that i've cleared out there but it's not going to do anything yet oh no because this laser is just a free floating laser at the moment what we need to do first is give it some way of pre-charging that is the wrong direction we want it to face the other way okay so there's a top tip for you place the laser pre-charger towards the laser if we right click here oh i really thought the focus was going to be going into that okay the focuses go here so let's pop them there i'm also going to pop a chest on top and i think that should be it now so this power line goes all the way down through this mega shaft that I have dug here. Let's go for a little bit of a wander. It zigzags in a diagonal manner and then down diagonally 
totally disregarding how hard this actually was to get dug here and if we carry on all the way down you can see that there is a tunnel here the line goes up over and down this side and this actually goes all the way down to oh wow that that kind of hurt down to the turbine here i dug a little bit out obviously uh small trouble with silverfish here that definitely got out of hand there but i've noticed something we're producing 1082 rf per tick now the vast majority of it is actually headed down this line here but i'm all maxed out down this end so it must be coming mainly through here now obviously there's going to be a few things that are expending power on this line here we have things like the skeleton skeleton spawner the enderman spawner and i think the power machines up in the science room no not i think and the science machines up in the up in the science room the problem that means of course is we're only getting look tiny amounts of energy per tick so i think we're gonna have to make it bigger to get this working properly we can also put other pre-charges on there but if this one's not maxed out then what's the point also, while we're out and talking, at some point I've managed to go and kill myself a whole load of Enderman. That is great, awesome, and wonderful. I'm going to take a repeating clip because that's the only one I use. So some time has passed and items have been going into the chest up here. I have noticed I've made a little bit of a mistake though. If you press, no not R, if you press U on this and get the uses, you can see chemical decomposer. But over here in the laser drill, it shows us what's going to be coming out of here on the sort of the percentage charts. If we then come over and do the same on the green, oh what's that? only the chemical decomposer looks like it's not actually going to give us anything uh, but look at the rate the work is being done here it it's slow maybe one a second so whilst that's waiting i've gone ahead and done some other things i want to head back down underground you remember that we have a access way to the roof here from paradise farms i've uh, done a little sprucing up of the corridor here it just looks a little bit nicer push these walls back a little bit uh put down a whole load of supports but what have i done to the vine room well i've spruced it up a little bit i've actually pushed back this wall a little bit here and dug a hole in the floor to get a whole load of algae flowing and growing here now i was having a little bit of trouble and i was wondering whether it was skylight that needed but no i just needed to actually bring the light level down and make it a lot brighter here not the light level down the the glowstone down to the closer to the floor here but what are we going to do with this well i need to make an automatic farm uh mainly for protein which i know we could do through meat and stuff like that but i'm going to do it through the algae here because that's what i've been doing i've been doing that a lot and what are we going to use do you remember way back, many, many episodes, probably, yeah, many episodes, I can't remember, we made these modular sockets and we were like, huh, I don't know what I'm going to use these for. Well, we found a use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a slab temporary. oh, maybe not then, uh, a slab temporarily on top of this glowstone block here, if I can. No, is it not going to not gonna work for me? Let's break that again. There we go, because I want to put some machines on top of these here. Uh, these mo modular sockets, in fact. So if we pop these across like this, and then come over to here. Now, I've got... Oh, I've only got a few pickaxes here. I meant to go and get myself some more sticks. Hold tight. I'm not sure why I told you to hold, hold tight. It's not like I couldn't have done it in a super smooth cut. Uh, those like that. Okay, and we just want to get a few more of these. Now, of course, the shift click doesn't work in these workbenches. Uh, let me just pull, pull them out. So what are we going to do with them? We're going to put them up the top here. You will see these blank modules. We also made these back when we made those modular sockets. If we have a look, they're kind of built like this. The machine chassis is like this. Not the easiest thing in the world to make, but we had a whole load of kicking around, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. And they make these breaker modules. Now, I need four for each of the modular sockets behind me, and as we have three, that means I want 12. Okay, so I've got all 12, and what I'm going to do is kind of put them all around the outside of these modular sockets here. So there is a breaker on every face. I'm also going to take my little uh, socket remote here, switch it to red, and then put all of these on their first channel. So they, they all talk 
the same language. Now, these aren't going to be talking in between the boxes because, you know, I haven't figured out how to do that without massive amounts of wiring. But one of the things we can do, oh, of course, is get some item outputs. We're going to want to take some stuff out of these. So let's pop them on the top here like that. So this one is on our green. I believe green is the item. And once again, I'm just going to put them on the first channel here. Okay, so we've got a thing to break the algae, we've got a thing to output the algae. Obviously, the next thing we need to do is some way of detecting the algae growing. And I'm going to do that through a block update sensor. It seems one of the easiest ways to do it, especially in this particular setup. Now, I'm going to need to get down underneath here. This is, might have been a little mistake putting in this obsidian already. Uh, but once I'm down here, I'm also going to put this one on its red to the first channel. Now, if I come up here and... I'm going to pop this obsidian in first. Let, let's do that. And then if I pop this little bit of algae there, there we go. You see how these all broke instantly? And there's even some algae ready for output up here. So I'm going to go around and do all that. And then we'll talk about how I'm going to collect all these items together. Of course, it's going to be draw and conduit. How else would I do this? So if I just kind of click on here, always active. And then it should start. No? No, is that not ready to go already? I would have thought it would have been. After far too much playing around, it was, of course, that I hadn't set this to insert. I, I don't know, I'm a little bit silly at times. Okay, and here we go. We've got algae growing. We're just going to double check that it will flow through. There's eight there right now, so I'm going to pop one of these down. Immediately disappears. Should give us nine. Okay, it flows. We then will take all this, which is just going to tick up over time. You can see that it's always got uh, algae at least in the corners from it. So there should be plenty of reason for it to grow. Maybe we could also place a few of these down here just to uh, just to encourage it a little bit more. So that's going to carry on flowing this way. And we're going to take this to the science room and pop it in here. Now I could put a line going all the way into this and then pump it maybe into this section here and then pre- uh, sorry, automatically process it down. But I think for the moment, this will do. I've got a little... No, that's polymethyl. I thought I had protein out here. Oh, well, protein is obviously going to collect in there for now. That's fine, because we're only going to make a couple per stack. So, time has passed, and I really do mean time has passed. Something like four hours. I have spent most of it just kind of walking around, shuttling things back and forth between... Um, machine tier, just really kind of building up my stocks of stuff. I've burnt through all my iron, I've burnt through a whole load of uh, gold, so I've decided that I needed to uh, build the stocks back up. Look at all that iron I've got there. But there, there is a little issue with this. In fact, let's let's go for a wander down here. You can see that I've put a new new floor in here. It looks nice. I'm struggling with the idea of maybe putting spruce all the way to the side there. I think it's a bit too flat and plain, but at the same time, I don't like the way these to interact. That, that was a bit weird there. Never had any of those type of glitches on this world before. But yeah, so with all the hours passed, 58 bits of protein. It is absolutely disgraceful. And like, I know what you're thinking, but there's only three here. Of course it's not going to do well. This is not where I wanted to be. <laughs> Okay, this is the spot I wanted to be. Bit, a bit of teleporting around. We found it eventually. Literally, that is the pathway I was just stood on. I've put in a lot more down here, you know? So it should be kind of pulling a whole load of algae through, but still only 58 bits of protein. So I also then spent a little bit of time going around and experimenting with other means. And the simplest way... It, it kind of kills me. All you have to do is sit here with some bone meal and then roll your mouse wheel back and forth. You get a whole load of soya beans. Uh, and I do mean you get a load of soya beans for that. You throw them in here. And then it kind of distributes them amongst these pressers. Um, they should all be... No, firm turn tofu comes to me. This should have been soya milk. Somewhere along the line, this has got backed up in a funny way. I haven't put any uh, filters on it. That was going to be my next uh, step to it. But this is kind of just an experimental phase right now you can see everything drops in we've got the uh, soya beans up top the soya milk down below and the silken tofu the reason i've actually got a little uh, weird t-junction here was because i had to clear some old stock so if i do that this should now mean that everything just flows in the manner it wants to there are a few issues here but that's okay now it just fills me up with tofu and it is literally about a rate 
of a stack of stack of tofu every oh, I don't know three or four minutes something like that it is quick as long as I can sit there and feed in the bone meal everything works fine and look how quick the protein builds up so with all that machinery built uh, this this is better so with the inefficiencies and failures on creating one piece of technology, I've decided to come to a creative world. You can tell it's creative because the sun doesn't move. I did bring Twitch Johnny 5 with me and we are out in the obsidian waste because I've been building stuff. Um, building's a bit strong. I didn't, I didn't make this. I kind of just pulled it all out of the uh, creative industry here. But I have creative industry? Creative inventory here. But I have created a thing. I have created... Elise. It's my little robot. She does some stuff. Let's turn on this thing and equip her with a few things that I want to give. Normally this would be dirt, but I was like, hey, let's be extravagant. <clears throat> if we have a quick look on the hard drive, because I've been writing some programs here. Uh, they, they all do some random things. Uh, I've been like working through different bits of technology. I think the first one I want to show you is the walk command. Of course, it just goes forwards. Nothing, nothing spectacular there. But if we uh, build a small obstacle course for it, I don't know, something like that. That should uh, definitely show its... Uh, it potential, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, unfortunately, I do have to go in and do this every time. I'm going to have to write a master control program at some point to go in and just call the walk command over and over. Um, but yeah, there we go. It, she goes around, she does everything that we need her to do. Uh, but she's not going to be completely useful, she just does that. We do, of course, need her to do something else. That's going to be the compare function that I've been writing. You can see she looks underneath her, she goes, Oh look, there's a bit of obsidian under there. Let me dig it with, add it with this diamond pickaxe of mine. And when that cut comes up, replace it with a bit of dirt that is in the second slot here. Now, my plan is to hook up the dirt farm to a box up somewhere and then write a program to go along and fill up all this stuff. But I think I've done enough stuff now to stop playing around the creative and let's get back to the real world or at least the simulated version of the world that we are accepting as real for the sake of this particular set of fiction here. But that's a bit of a mouthful, so let's just call it the real world, shall we? I picked up a whole load of stuff for robots when we were out in the bunkers. You remember back when we were like getting shot at by lasers and pigmen were killing us all the time? Well, we picked up a whole load of stuff, all these computer bits here. And I was kind of hoping, ah, uh, there's not a tier three computer case. Okay, we're going to have to start some uh, serious, serious crafting here. I want to have a look here. What have we got? That's a screen. This one. Computer case. Get tier 3. Okay, that's not too bad. Bunch of diamonds, iron bars, tier 3 microchip, printed circuit board, and a chest. And that is how you make a tier 3 computer case. But we're not going to use it like this. We're going to go put it inside another machine. But I want to show you some other things that I've been doing. As you know, we are working towards having this quest done uh, to get two more Wands of Summoning. There are two more cultures we have not brought back into the world. The Normans and the... Oh, I feel so bad. Uh, Normans and the Indians. Uh, they're the ones we have not brought back yet. And as you can see here, this one, nice round numbers. We got 500, 500, 1000, 2000. That's what we need there. And now I've started work on the second one. Over here, you can see we've got the 500 protein. As actually we have 500 protein up there. We also have all the clay, but the clay needs breaking down and cooking into bricks. At stone bricks, we're lagging a little bit behind on. I've set up this little contraption over here. This is about as slow as your grandmother makes anything, you know. Uh, we, we've got barely five stacks of stone done there. Uh, and of what I need, at least this much, just for one box. Just for one box. In fact, no, that's for one and a half. So we're getting there, but it's taking some time. As for this computer case, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. In fact, I'll show you. I've put a new travel anchor in. I thought it would be useful and necessary. And oh, what's this? Crafting tables. Well, you know, we're going to have a few things to do. But first, I want to go to the assembler. Oh, yes. This is where we're going to put our computer case. This is how you make robots. They kind of function like turtles, if you guys remember computer craft. If you don't... Guys, buckle in. This is going to be a hell of a trip for you. Okay, so first we want to be able to access our robot when it's out and about in the real world. We want to be able to program and stuff like that. So I'm going to put a keyboard and screen in. Now, these we got from the uh, the bunker where the 
launch codes were kept, so I don't really need to explain that. This EEPRO ROM, I might need to explain though. You create this like this, that just makes a blank one, but it's not going to boot with a blank one. You need to put some information on it. So you make an open computer manual, that is literally just a book and a microchip. Uh, you then use that to make the EEPR ROM. Oh, I always get that. EEP ROM. <laughs> uh, and that's how you put the 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 loading in instructions on there oh that was a bit wordy but there we go we, we got that now over here i've got a whole load of other stuff to go because computer needs some memory we all know computer needs memory two bits of ram that should have been two bits of ram there we go awesome over here we also have a tier three uh, CPU. These are all just made out of things like microchips that you put four of the microchips together to make a tier three. The algorithmic logic unit. It's just transistors and microchips. We've actually been through all this before. Uh, if you don't know what's going on here, go back a few episodes. You'll, you'll find out what's going there. But we've made a CPU and a memory module. Also need a hard disk because as you guys know, this is what's needed to make a computer run. Now this, this is a bit weird. We take a card base. This is basically just your blank uh, circuit board with the gold connector and the... I don't know what you call the, the interface at the back, but the interface at the back. And then we pop it down there to populate that particular board with all this stuff here. That gives us a graphics card. Oh, yes, indeed. And these all just kind of come along. You can shift-click them in place. And you get this complexity meter pop-up. This tells you how much stuff you can put in your robot. We could just go straight ahead and assemble here. But you can see it's given us a warning. We need an inventory upgrade. Okay, we'll take an inventory upgrade. This gives it uh, literally an inventory like I've got. Uh, it's not quite like I've got. There is uh, a few caveats to it. It's, a, it's only a 9x9, nine nine, I think, as well, and stuff like that. Another thing I want to do is give it a solar generator, because I have a feeling it being able to charge itself during the day is going to be advantageous. I just... I've, just got a gut feeling about that. Uh, and I also wanted to set up another one, but it looks like I did not. The next one I want to set up is this navigation upgrade unit. Now, this has a coordinate system built into it based on the map you use to make it. Or at least it used to, anyway. I'm not sure if uh, it's different. There, there, there we go. That's how you upgrade the information. So we're going to go around and grab some of this stuff. Some gold, a couple of tier 2 microchips, compass, water bottle, and an empty map. And that's the last bit we need for this particular robot setup. I'm not sure if this is going to be the final one I want to do, but I am going to assemble. We're going to watch this crawler put across here in four minutes. Whoa. So, of course, immediately after that four minutes had passed, I realised that I made a grievous error. That was, of course, not updating the navigation unit with uh, a map. There we go. Got my last component back there. And I was just going to go ahead and put it into the navigation component. Let's uh, try and sort this all out. I put that all across my hotbar there so things would go into my inventory. But whilst doing that, I noticed something very interesting. So, look, I'm this one in the middle that's spinning around on this map. But over back at the pod, that must be the pod, there appears to be another map or player or something. I mean, that normally indicates another player with the same map. Ah, oh, it's night time. Let's get a little snooze on the go. Hey, Twitch Young E5. I love this effect that he comes up with uh, it, with his name like that. Obviously, uh, the name is just kind of pointing at my position, but when I'm in the bed... My, my face is over that way. I'm sure that's uh, an interesting bug to be reported to someone at some point anyway. Uh, so we want to go over this way. Who has a map all the way up here? Uh, I should have put my glider on actually, I suppose. We are literally... Yeah, no, it is. It is from my pod. So let's go and have a look here. Where's the map? There, there's supposed to be a map here, is there? Maybe. I mean, I, I really would like to have had a more zoomed-in version. I don't actually see a map anywhere, though, guys. Do you, do you see one? Obviously, this is where we started. Perhaps it's something, uh, a hangover from something Landstrider did when he was setting up the map. But I, I really... No, no, even, even that wouldn't be a thing. No, I'm not sure where the map would be at all here. Well, anyway, with that mystery out of the way, I mean, it's not really solved. It still is there. What I'm going to do is put this navigation unit and this map in here, and hopefully this will now have all the information uh, from that map. Uh, oh, and we get to keep it. Oh, that's even better. Oh, that is that is a lot better. I love that. Ah, oh, that is unfortunate. Fortunate. So, I was kind of hoping that through the power of zooming in on the maps, I would end up with a navigational upgrade unit that has 
quite a range, a range that would go all the way out to here. But it turns out, no, it's only this first level map that uh, actually works for. So we're going to have to put a... Uh, a station for the robot about where my cursor is because it's going to see the cursor that as the zero zero position there um so right in close by the laser oh that's very interesting that's very anyway i'm gonna go put together boom this robot again and then i'll see you outside and we'll talk about some basic functions and then finish the episode because wow we are starting to run a little long now Okay, guys, so another mistake had been made. This was that I had forgotten to put a disk drive in, meaning this slot was not available to me. The disk drive, relatively simple to make. You just need a printed circuit board, piston, microchip, and a few base materials. Now, this allows me to put another floppy disk in here. Now, the floppy disk, if I can... Oh, I can't open the NEI from that place. But if I press R here, you can see a floppy disk is made nice and simply uh, using these things. It's a disk platter like so. But you then combine it with another one of these open computer manuals, which, trust me, you'll be doing a lot if you want to work with this. Uh, that enables it to put in there. And this is basically your Windows system. So the last one we put in the E. EEPROM uh, is like your BIOS, if you will. And then this is like your Windows if you need that sort of thing to uh, bounce off from. Okay, so you can boot this up and everything's kind of okay. The problem is when you're running off a disk, everything is read-only. If I was to go edit uh, dig.lua, that's to write a program called dig. Uh, it's read-only. So what you actually need to do is install the disk. This will take a little bit of a time, but that is okay. We're going to select, put it on hard drive A1E. Remember those first three letters there? They are important if you want to use it, but this is the hard drive um, number. So we're going to press 1 and install that. This is going to take a little bit of time, as does any installation process. I love the fact that you can hear the uh, disk and hard drive working away there. Absolutely beautiful all sorts of user manuals get put in as well so if you ever find yourself in trouble uh, yes I would like to reboot now you can go to that manual now this time you don't actually need a disk the disk is necessary to install the operating system that is a must why is this powering down there should be all right anyway I'll, I'll figure that out afterwards uh, in fact I am all but done now. Uh, there are a few things I want to do in between episodes. I want to program this guy up to make him walk around, find obsidian, and replace it with dirt, as previously demonstrated. But there are a few other things I want to do. And now I'm going to talk to any coders out there, because I would like to have a little help. Okay, so this command here tells me three digits of my world location. These are actually standard coordinates of Minecraft here. The thing is, I know how to put stuff into a variable. Like, I could create x so i can do that but that of course will only give us the x coordinate here if i now just go out print x we get that what obviously i want is some sort of a vector or three component now i was thinking that maybe an array would do it but last oh no that's that's not the one but when i tried it last time it really wasn't having it no, you see, we get a function callback if there's a problem and stuff like that. Now, obviously, this is probably something to do with my syntax of how to use arrays, or maybe it's something to do with the fact that Lua doesn't have arrays and I need to implement it in a list. This is something that I found online, but if anybody actually knows what's going on out there, please do let me know, because I this is the thing that's stopping me being able to work with these coordinates and get this guy coming back to where he needs to be. So if you know how to sort that out, please do let me know. I will be doing some research in between times, but yes, that is all. Well, I've got time for today. Well, actually, this has been a whole week-long project trying to figure out how to do this. I am not a coder. I've been putting that, putting together everything from little fragments of knowledge that I know from around the world. But anyway, thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. I will see you next time when we're going to finish off that dude there. We're going to spawn up our two villages, and we're going to try and eradicate blazes and ghasts using the quest system right here these ones here so i will see you then when we're gonna do that bye